So I know this video is called Don't Play This Joseki. That's only going to be a small part of the video. It'll happen kind of near the beginning. If you're here just to learn which Joseki not to play, just watch the first few minutes and then go do something else on the internet because I'm sure there's tons of cool stuff you want to do on the internet. But uh, this will be a full video where I actually go through one of my, actually my very first league game for the Yungazang Dojang, uh, which is a, I would say now, a pretty famous internet goal school, at least in the West. Uh, it's specifically designed for the Americas and Europe uh, by uh, several Korean pros. And here we are at the website. If we click on the American time zone, there we go. Here's what it looks like. There's Insong, uh, Itan Pro from Korea. And it's really pretty fantastic. Uh, so far, again, I've just been, I've really been in it about a week and a half or so. Um, though I did get to uh, preview a bunch of the lectures and reviews and things uh, during the last season. I think this is season 23. There it is. And uh, this, I mean, Insong is just an incredible teacher. I really look up to him. Uh, he, uh, you know, his English is very good. Uh, his concepts are universal. Again, he likes to teach a lot of heuristics, a lot of things, a lot of methods that would apply to Western students. And every uh, week, or even more than once a week, I guess, uh, all the people in the official program play some games. So you can check that out. There's where the standings are after round one. Um, there's actually a lot of different divisions uh, that you can check through. So anyway, Yungazong Dojong, this is my first week in this, this online go school slash league thing, and it's pretty exciting. So far, i got to give it a really positive shout out. At some point, I really would like to do like a full video just devoted to it and really uh, just kind of do a review. Uh, I haven't gotten Insong's permission to do that yet, but we'll, we'll work on that. And we'll do, we'll do a Nixabiki Go lecture just about reviewing, you know, this particular online go school. So if you want to do it too, you may. Uh, it is growing pretty fast, so I'll... I'll say that <laughs> I think Insong is worried that it might grow too fast and he might not have enough room for uh, all the newcomers that have been joining. But anyway, it's great, and so far, so good. So anyway, uh, let's get to some Go. And this is my first game. This is against a an American or Chinese-American Ford on Audrey Wang, uh, whose fa her father is a very strong Go player in China. Uh, I've known her for a few years through the US Go Congress. I don't think she and I have ever actually played a serious game, uh, but... You know, she's certainly a strong player and plays a lot of Go. So, yeah, I was just kind of excited to my first round. I was playing someone I actually already kind of knew. Uh, anyway, I am the White Stones here. And for those of you who just are here to learn what Joseki not to play, uh, we'll get to it pretty quickly. So far, pretty normal opening. She takes this 1-4-3, and she plays a Kobayashi, which is fine. Uh, that's, yeah, it's an, it's an opening. Traditionally, uh, for many years, really, I guess going back maybe since the 90s, um, really actually not quite sure the first year, white has been hesitant to approach this too closely. Otherwise, white will get pincered and sort of get run into the stone. Although recent developments have shown various ways for white to deal with that or for white to actually not fear that as much. Uh, and so I certainly didn't play this back off move again. We kind of expect this kind of move. This is the traditional approach to the Kobayashi. But no, we're just going to dive right in here play this high move, and try to limit this bottom structure's influence. Very normal. And she plays a pincer. And again, this is straight, normal Kobayashi style. Uh, when I was learning, when I was taking private lessons from Yulin Yang, he actually recommended this pincer. This was his favorite pincer in the Kobayashi formation. Uh, very tight, just really just forces white to run immediately, and black can just start building this directly. Uh, this one's kind of the same idea. Uh, but we get into this large knight, sort of a magic sword variation that uh, many of you guys, if you, if you are in the single-digit Q range, uh, especially lower single-digit Q range, you know this Joseki, or at least you've seen it very well, because it both confounds you, confuses you, and you see it all the time. So it's a very popular, more popular Joseki in the West. Uh, on the Asian servers, I've actually seen fewer people playing this. They tend to just leap out more often. Um, this is, again, maybe more modern. Uh, I don't know. I think Western players still really are enamored of this Joseki. Um, partially maybe just because it's the Joseki that gets used or that gets played out in Lee Sedol's ladder game. And, you know, if you're playing on the internet and you're a Western player, you probably have heard of Lee Sedol's ladder game. It's what has this magic to it, right? It's not just called the magic sword. It's, it's, it has this other mythology around it. So p players like it. Uh, certain players, certain populations like it, let me put it that way. And so we play out the standard variation up until here. And this is this is the point where, if again, if you were watching this video just to see what Joseki not to play, this is the move. 
because the normal black move in this formation is here, and that's what Audrey plays. And here is what I'm telling you. This is my public service announcement. This is no longer Joseki. The robots blew this up. The robots said, you know, just kind of laugh at this. They don't. They think this is a bad variation. All the robots agree. And uh, I think I put this. Yeah, it was into the elf uh, weights into Lizzie. And after this Joseki is played out, I think it put white at like a 98, 99% win percentage or something. It hates this Joseki that much for black. And so don't play this Joseki. Uh, I'm going to back up a little bit just in case you have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, it says, again, this pincer variation, two space high pro or one space high approach, two space pincer, white plays here, black cuts through, white Han is on the outside, black keeps the two groups separated, white takes the shape point, and again, black makes this table shape to sort of save, stabilize this whole group. And so what we'd normally expect, right, the most normal, classic, nice version of Stroseki is something like white to play here, black to play here, white to push, black to cover, and then if white has the ladder, this is the least fatal ladder variation where all these points are, all these cutting points are actually protected right now as long as white has the ladder. If you're a little bit scared or you don't have the ladder, you can just play this one. It's almost the same. You do lose a few points of end game though. So that's, that's I think, what Audrey kind of expected. This is what, uh, you know, she thought would happen. And this looks pretty nice for black, to be honest. Number one, uh, these stones are already have support with here and here. Black comes with a sentai and will probably play another move, maybe at top. I don't know which one, uh, but could also do things like invade or take another big point. Uh, did I say top and at the side? Uh, but anyway, black is really happy to have sentai and have this formation basically supporting these two stones. So, uh, you yeah, know, this would be fine for black. But the robots say white can be a little bit greedier here and can afford to give black more thickness. And how white does that is instead of by honeying here, you just push. And this is the crudest of crude moves in Go, right? You're just, you're just pushing through and poking at all the things uh, like so. At this point, black can cut. And, you know, white will basically just give up this stone. But white gets all these other, you know, quasi-forcing moves. And white ends up taking a really large corner. And at this point, there's a couple moves for white to consider, um, the main one of which is uh, this one, or Tanuki. And probably either one is fine. Uh, I put this into Elf, and Elf had the this continuation rated very highly, as well as several other moves, so it was very close how big this continuation is. If white is going to Tanuki, um, this is the proper follow-up move for black, and white just sort of has to back off and take a slightly smaller corner and get sealed in. And so traditionally, right, in professional go evaluation they generally concluded that this was good for black or at least just Jose maybe joseki but slightly good for black and we didn't play it a lot we didn't see this variation very often like these very crude thrusting moves where you only take points allow yourself to be sealed in very much out of favor but the thing is is that this corner is so big that it's hard to actually get enough compensation with this wall. As glorious of a wall this is, it still has a little bit of a defect. Uh, this, this stone is still cut here. Uh, if white doesn't continue down here, white does get to have sente. Um, if white does continue, then uh, you know the corner is even bigger, um, and black has a little bit more of a shape problem. But mm, you know, black gets to have sente, so that's pretty valuable too. So either way, uh, you know, it's, it's playable for both sides, except. Uh, this, this number of points is too large. And so all the robots are now telling us this is not slightly good for black. It's actually just flat out good for white. Uh, and sure enough, um, if you look at these two stones over here, even though they're facing the wall, they're, they're helping support the wall in the correct direction, it's actually over-concentrated. And after the game, uh, Audrey and I went through it and we, we reviewed a little bit ourselves and and the first thing she was said, she was like, yeah, I just felt so over-concentrated. Like, how many points can you really get from this area? And here, we'll, well, we'll find out soon. So anyway, what's the moral of the story? What should you play? Going back to uh, this point in the game. Again, if you can't play the standard Joseki, uh, you have to play either sort of this quasi-trick variation or uh, the actual true fighting variation. And this is the variation that Insong recommends. Uh, because he does review all these games as part because any any league game he does a very nice review for uh, where white has to uh, push through and fight essentially to get a good enough result 
And this is definitely a fight that um, is complicated, and I, I won't show you too many variations. Actually, I actually won't show you any variations, because I want to get to the game. Uh, in this case, white has a ladder, but black also already has a stone in support here, and again, the pincer stone. So it kind of works out to be a more or less fair fight for both players, and this is this is the expected reasonable result. Yeah, and I know it doesn't look reasonable right now because the corner is, you have two black stones here and cut, cut, and then these stones are about to die in a ladder. It's, you know, looks very unreasonable, but it is a fight where everyone should live. Should. <laughs> uh, so that's a recommended variation. So this is the Joseki. You can no longer play. Don't play this Joseki. This is too good for white now. Uh, so again, another, another illustration put forward by the robots that have corrected our go playing, which is both, you know, cool and depressing you know we're just we're just on our way to being overruled by robots and everything <sighs> yeah so okay if that's all you care about if you just came to see which joseki not to play that's it go home go go on reddit and i don't know look at cat pictures but for those of you who actually want to know what happened the rest of the game let's keep going uh because certainly this is the joseki that i play out and i do end up playing this s8 point to not perfect the corner but um uh, it's, it's it's just a really big move. Like it's just it's just a really big move, um, surprisingly big. Now in the game, uh, Black takes this point again, trying to make this bottom into something. Right? It looks it still looks over concentrated, doesn't it? Like it's a lot of points here, but look at the size of this corner. And even if White just takes this corner, uh, you know we've got a, a super solid fifteen points here, a super solid twenty plus points here, and so. Is this worth, can you find 35 points in this area? Uh, you know, like, to re realistically, like, I don't know. Like, even, even if we give black this move and maybe another move, you know, let's just give some stones. Like, is this 35 points? One, two, three, I should count this. So there's 16, about another 32. Yeah, actually, this is bigger than 32 points. But I gave black three moves here. <laughs> So, <laughs> you know, white's never going to give black perfection here. Solidly, you could probably say white, black should be at least getting 20. I think that's that's pretty reasonable. Um, but especially if there's exchanges like this, there's monkey jumps, there's ungame, there's top reductions. Uh, you know, black might get up to 30 pretty without without working too hard. But that's all of white's, that's all of black's territory, right? Black has a corner, white has a corner, and this is everything black has. And if white already has Comey and 35, Black's already losing by 10. So anyway, Elf really hated this position for Black. Elf Elf was very upset. Um, Elf does want to play here immediately. This is the proper move. Um, White cannot extend here. This would be a train wreck. Just a train wreck uh, to kill these White Stones. So in this case, when Black cuts across this shape, White just has to take. And Black could Tanuki or perfect the shape like this. And Tanuki is probably the better answer. Um, you don't really care about this right now. This is solid. This hanging connection is solid enough. But look at this corner, right? This is 15, 20, plus the capture, 23 points. It's a 23 point corner that was originally Black's. Wow. Like, Black has to make 23 points here alone to compensate for this. Never mind, you know, finding compensation for Comey. So, yeah, that's our new evaluation from the robots. Okay, here I make a little mistake. And it's not the worst mistake in the world, but it's, you know, you're going to see this, even though white takes this huge lead, essentially. And, and by huge, I do mean like 10 points. Um, maybe that's not a huge lead in your games, but in Don-level games, that's that's a lot. Um, after this point, this is a mistake, you, you know, this huge lead uh, starts to get whittled away a, a little bit by black, because white makes a few just inopportune uh, moves. Uh, one of the other moves I considered at this point was this playing here, and this is the move, this is the better move, I should just do this. If black is, if your opponent is trying to build the middle, uh, the middle is connected to the sides. It's not really connected to the corners, and that's really important to remember and go. If your opponent is trying to build something here, play the sides rather than worry about the corners, uh, and that'll just thwart your plans. And I, this is what I should do. And I thought about it, and I was like, no, this is this is a my first league game. I want to squeeze every blood from the stone I can. So let me go as far as I want from this this uh, this corner and ask black what they want to do. And if they back off, then you know that looks great for white. Of course, my opponent had different plans, and so she played this pincer, right? She took this middle stone. You can already just even even just feel, right, how this stone is, you know, potentially helping this area uh, much more so than any play in the corner would. 
so I, in my next move, I took a long time to think about. It was a clock actually update here, 3654. Let's see how long I took. Yeah, so I took over almost three minutes. Yeah, almost three minutes exactly uh, to, to play this move because this is this is normally a bad variation for white. It's a very it's a very bleh variation where white really doesn't get much. But in this case, it, it's the correct variation. Um, normally, white would want to just take the corner, but this would be kind of a disaster, or at least giving black uh, what black wants. Um, in this position, the stone actually has a lot of Aji left. Um, so white is actually pretty happy taking the 10 points in the corner, and then we'll think about doing something with this stone later. Um, but the problem, again, is of course black will continue playing the center. You can already start to see now this stone and this stone and this wall are all helping contribute. So it's really not a good option. Uh, so I have to play this very lackluster Joseki. <clears throat> if you guys are Q players, you're probably thinking, well, of course you'd play that. That's what I would do in my game. Yeah, that's because Q players jump all over the place and don't value territory enough. But that's another story. Okay, uh, black follows me out. And here I make another small mistake. Uh, and I immediately, as soon as I played the move, I regretted it. This is one of those moves during the game where I'm like, ah, what else do I do? I guess I just finish the Joseki. And as soon as I play, I go, oh, no, no, I have, this is this is the now, the time where I should do something different. And Insong totally pointed this out in his review of the game, too. Uh, the move that he and I both now think we should play is here. Uh, I think the robot, I think uh, um, the stupid robot, Elf, actually wanted me to play here, which is this wild. Um, same idea, same idea, but just, man, leaving this defect is scary. Could you, would you do this in your game? Like, I don't know. Like, uh, granted, white, black isn't entirely that strong here, so... Um, but I also don't have the ladder, <laughs> you know, after this stone. So I'm not really sure how to fight. I'm just not sure how to continue if black just immediately fights. So anyway, again, the uh, the 8 Don Korean Pro and myself think this is the, the nicer move. Um, you know, and black will probably be forced into taking the corner, but then that's great. Look, I mean, how does black build this into something now if white has all this outside wall here? Um, or maybe even just pincer first, force black to come out, and then start making some sort of shape over here with moves like any of these uh, to just help out this group. So anyway, we regretted what we did because in the game we actually played the normal Joseki move, which was to ask for some of the corner. And in the game, I really did actually expect Audrey to answer here, just because this this Joseki, from a book point of view, is bad for white. Um, there's still defects, like here and here. You can see how this creates a little bit of a problem. Like, white's alive, like white's not going to die. Um, but this can be very small points, and black has a lot of forcing moves on the outside. But this is not what she did. She, of course, just capped here and said, okay, enough is enough. <laughs> it's now time to or maybe not time, but it's uh, the correct direction is to continue trying to build this middle um, and see how large we can get it to catch up to white's lead in points. And so I was very sad after white played here. Um, I think the next best move is just for white to play here immediately. Uh, it's a huge move. Again, it actually prevents this cutting sequence. Um, or does it? Oh, it really doesn't. What does it do? Mm, or does it? <laughs> yeah, it totally does. You just have to play that way. Sorry. Like, <laughs> that would be... Actually, it still has some Aji, though. This is really kind of bad Aji, but it looks like it's fine. Um, yeah. So, again, if black is threatening to make this into points, well, why don't fix your defect and come out here and just make sure white has... or black has no territory here. I think that's something I should have played. But instead, I just continued with... Whoops. Uh, the corner, because again, the corner is still big, and that does make these two stones alive. It's like this is a reasonable move. It's not the ideal move. It's not really paying enough attention to the board. It's really just having the. It's really just a local move. It's like locally the best move to anchor these stones, and it's worth a lot of points. But globally, again, this is what's important. So I so if I can have time to play this, and especially if I can get a reaction once or twice here, uh, you know, this is much better for white. Because again. Uh, at any point, Audrey can come back here and cut across and seal this in. But anyway, I take the points move, and now all of a sudden white has four corners, right? It's, I mean, these two corners still have to be talked about. Um, but this corner is huge, 
And this corner isn't small. I'd say this is a, this is a medium-sized corner here. So there is that old uh, uh, proverb where if uh, white has four corners, black should resign. Um, if black has four, or, yeah, sorry. If, if white has all four corners, black should resign. If black has four corners, black should also resign. I'm not sure if you heard that one. It's kind of funny because uh, it just assumes that number one, white is the stronger player, and the benefit of Comey. Um, between, between being the stronger player normally in normal circumstances and having Comey, the, uh, per, whoever gets four corners chose wrongly, right? Made, made a bad deal. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Oh, yeah, this move. Yeah, so Audrey plays here. And again, I, I, after the game, I thought, I, like I showed her, I thought she would do this next, um, which seems pretty reasonable. Um, there's still kind of some defects here for white to take advantage of that are a little bit scary for black, but black can handle these all now. So unless white has something else to support them, um, I think this is a stronger way to play than this. Oops, is that what she played? Sorry, she didn't exchange that. Yeah, she just played there. Uh, it's just a little bit stronger. It's a little bit tighter. And um, right now there's there's a little bit of the potential for this stone to come under attack if white builds left. And we'll see that later because um, this shape is is very loose. Uh, but right now, I was very inspired. I was well, not very inspired, but I was very uh, motivated <laughs> to look at this board and go, "Oh my God, the middle is going to get huge. This is the moment I have to leap in." And I think Insong and the robot both completely disagree with me. They're like, "Oh no, you can still reduce this. This is still too wide open. There's too much space in here for Black to defend. White can still just qu crawl and squirm." Uh, but uh, yeah, for my Pergo game with, with Haley, uh, Lee Hodgen, uh, you know, it was another game where, where, where my partner and I gave, um, this three-down professional a huge center with her partner, and we had to work really hard in order to make a group there, and so we, you know, we, I, I played a lot of moves to make sure we didn't leap in one move too late, and because there's always the danger of that, right? You never want to be one move too late, so I kind of felt like this was the timing, um, if you ask the robot, um, I think the robot wants to play here and just make this exchange first before doing anything else, because this again helps the corner a little bit. It does, uh, you know, I mean, it is it is a better shape exchange for black, like black can still come in here, but it it makes black's job just a, enough more difficult that white is is better is in better shape to make eyes. Let's say that if if white comes under attack. Uh, uh, Insong wanted to play here. He said, yep, this is good enough if black just comes up, you know, like, like this is open now, right? You have a, a fourth line stone here. You can still just come in here and do what you want later. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I of course, defer to both of them. They're both stronger than me. Um, but, yeah, this is my move, and the robot didn't hate it when I put it into the computer. It really was like, eh, maybe minus 2% or something. It was fine fine with this. Um, black goes on the counter attack, right? So if you want to attack in the east, make noise in the west kind of idea. And I make this exchange, and then black gets to play another move, and then I play here. And Insong really liked this move. The robot was pretty mad about it, actually. The robot was like, fine. <laughs> um, it was not on its radar, and after you played it, it, it wasn't a big percentage loss. Um, but Insong really liked it, um, just in terms of you know, trying to make black even more over-concentrated. Because um, if black plays a move like this, this is a great exchange. Like, this is just um, just, just perfect point reduction for white. Uh, and if black plays a move like this, well, now this gives white another opportunity to make more shape. And we actually ended up in this type of position um, because Audrey clamped here. And I thought in the game, I was like, oh, okay, she's that kind of player. I kind of played this thinking, you know, I've never really played against... I've never really played a serious game against this person. I really don't know what kind of person... Or go player she is. So let's let's find out a little bit more about her personality here and see how she responds. And she responds viciously. She's like, I want it. <laughs> you know, just <laughs> no connection for you <laughs> kind of attitude. Uh, so we play out, I play out um, this shape sequence and of course extend here to get more liberties. And this creates uh, some cutting points here and puts the stone in jeopardy. So again, this is just a sabaki technique. I'm just I'm just looking for shape until I fail at making shape, which is what I do next. Uh, she Again, she plays the toughest move she can find, which is here. 
And I think the best move for white in this case is just to extend. Uh, this threatens a really nice little sequence over here. Let's say black does something like this. White can actually just sort of push through and uh, threaten this move. This connection threatens to both come this way as well as to push through uh, the stones completely. And so if black has to connect, you can just kind of see, whoops. Uh, white can just play there, and this isn't anything, right? And white, this is this would just be a fantastic result for white, right? Like, just amazing result for white. Uh, so, I I sort of know this, but I don't know. In the game, I keep thinking, oh, but this, but she's just gonna play here, and now my shape is kind of dumb again. So I really don't want to touch it. I want, I really wanted to hold off on making the defining the shape. Let's say that, but. And song just says, nope, this is this is good shape. It threatens black's weakness, it forces another move, and you know, if black does play this, you just come back here and, and play another move here, which again means you'll get more forcing moves on these two stones. So it keeps a lot of pressure on black while you're getting something like shape. And that's exactly all I need to do to win this game. Anyway, I play here. And this move is way too ambitious. This is no one likes this move. I thought it was really cool. You know. Um it looks cool. It's treating my stones very lightly. Um, but if I was going to jump, maybe just jumping here is actually better. Um, because again, it threatens to make shape directly while leaning on these two stones. And it keeps this um, Aji here in reserve too, right? If I get this and black solidifies or does something more violent, maybe here. Well, now I get to play this way. If respond, you know, respond. I don't know what's next. Maybe here. <laughs> You know, white has white has countermeasures, uh, but this movie is very loose, very loose, um, and black takes this shape point, so it is now much more difficult for white to lean. At this point, white should still just make this. This is a mistake um, that I leave forever. Um, and furthermore, um, for the most part, black should still play this. This is still a really good move for black. Like you're going to see, for the next hundred moves, this is a good move for black. <laughs> Actually, more than hundred moves, I think. Um, right up to the end of the game, this is still a good move for black. Maybe not right at the end. I I shouldn't, yeah, not right at the end. Okay, here, uh, I need to cover. And man, this would have been so much better had before I done this, this played here. This is this is now, now just such a better move, um, especially if black is going to defend this way to prevent more Aji from the other side. If black pushes and cuts here, you know, I can just make shape real easily. Um, you know, if we have to take, like, look at this, like, like, yeah, black can continue to cut here, <laughs> um, but it's not at all, well, white can fight on both sides. Maybe that's not as good as I thought. Oh, but there's still this move. That's kind of an annoying move for black. Because <laughs> black can't cut, right? This is just self-Atari. <laughs> um, anyway. This, this move is really useful, and I'm forever sad I don't get it. Because uh, when black plays here, I pull back. And this is this is sad. Like, it's just sad. Because I'm really not getting shape. I'm, I'm getting out little by little, but I'm not getting shape. And black will be able to profit by poking these shapes. So black takes this first. Oh, man, wouldn't the, this been not? If I extend now, right, black will play this way. And just cut through and uh, maybe even attack this and kill this. Um, but, man, if I had just gotten this move in first, especially if black had to block this way. But even if black blocks this way, now when I do this, you know, black can't push through this way. This is nothing. So man, one, one like like black is missing this exchange the entire game. And for this entire fight, I missed this, this move, how, the importance of this move. So we both, each of us, kind of miss one key shape point. Uh, which I guess if that cancels out, then that still means I'm winning, right? Because if this if this Joseki I cannot play is good for white, and if we both make a mistake, then it still should be good for white. <laughs> so we play here, and I play this move, and again after this is one of the, this is the second time in the game where I played this move, and immediately after I played, I went, oh, there was a better move, and the better move I found is right here. Again, sort of threatening this connection. Um, it's also actually better shape because it makes use of this stone, where this stone is just very plain. Um, not terribly useful. 
Um, and this this keeps pressure on black, right? If black wants to really fight here, like it's not easy. Um, like if you play this, if you try to save this stone, well, you can't do that. <laughs> well, maybe you can, uh, but either way, um, <laughs> Uh, all right, maybe this is overplay. I didn't read this out at all. I, I just guessed that this looked really good for white. It's close to being really good for white. Maybe make that exchange and then there, there you go. Yeah, so white, white is just, can get out this way, can Atari this way, is just destroyed even more than before. Maybe can eventually, if, if white gets another move over here, can link up to this stone and attack these three. So um, yeah, black would need another move, maybe this move. I don't know, something, something. It looks like white will be able to find an eye over here, or maybe an eye over here. All right, I mean, that's fantasy land. Real game, jump, and then black jump. And this move really surprised me. Like, it makes sense, right? It makes sense, but it feels... Uh, yeah, I, it, it's, it's attacking at a really far distance. And so while I certainly felt pressure from the stone, I was like, look, I can get out. I'm not in any trouble. I can figure it out. So I just took a big point. <laughs> and this is, this is you know, basically the biggest point on the board. Mm. Actually, maybe biggest area. Maybe that's still the better point. I think that's what um, the robot says. The robot likes this point better. Just play here and then, you know, do something. Maybe just like that. Uh... I just take the big point, and again, this is if, if black doesn't respond, of course, this is better for white, because white will be able to eat more points over here. Like, like none of these points will turn into black, because uh, of the monkey jump or other endgame options. Um, after the game, Audrey said she thought this was a mistake. Like, she felt like she had a chance after this move. But <sighs> these, this group is really hard to kill. Like, like, you basically are kind of at the point where you have to kill it to win. Uh, because if we said... Uh, look, we said before there was a 35-point um, corner value for white, uh, plus another almost, not quite 10. Let's say, let's say with this and Comey about another 15, so that's 50 points. If we say 5 points for white in the top left-hand corner, that's 55. Um, does black have 55 points anywhere? Well, really hard to see. Again, this got a lot smaller because white didn't respond here, and there's a monkey jump. So we can probably find 20 to 25 here. And then what? Can we get 15 here and 15 here? Possible, possible, but not not clear, not clear at all. I have to work really hard to find all those points. Um, and realistically in Go, if you need to make points in two areas, you're probably only going to get one of them because that's kind of how Go works. Now if you start with this peep, and this peep is very optimistic. It's very optimistic. But she again, she's kind of in, she felt, she felt like she had to kill to win kind of mode, or at least attack it to the point where she can make, you know, additional 15 points here and an additional 15 points here. Uh, and then she cuts. Um, I think, uh, did the robot tell me to play here? I can't remember what the robot said, but I didn't, I didn't do whatever it did. Um, I peeped here, and the logic was, well, hey, if... She's going to expose a stone here that I can capture. Plus, I still have this stone here, and these st two stones are not connected to the rest of this. So if I disconnect, I can even cut through and counterattack. You can kind of see these things, right? If A group gets cut off from B group, and then white ends up running this way, well, now B group's actually under a pretty severe attack. So, like, um, and C group, right, if, if this stone can also prevent C from, or help prevent C from linking up back to A group, um... I was pretty happy with this move, and I think the robot liked it too. Um, black just connects, and I felt like I had a lot of options. Like, I was like, okay, this, like, it looks dangerous, but, you know, going, like, we're, we're going to have to discuss this for about 50 more moves before it really defines the shape. But, eh, I don't know, I got resources. I'm not, I'm not too scared. Um, so the move I play is here next, and this is a little bit slack, but... Like, I, I, I know what my opponent's trying to do, right? She's trying to kill me. She's trying to go all out and kill me. And so I I kind of oblige her um, in that way. I, I'm like, I'm yes, let's let's do it. <laughs> let's see if you can kill me. I think this is probably the better move. Play something like this. 
Uh, she has a really hard time knowing what to do here, right? If she just runs the stone out, like disconnecting me is really hard, right? Because this is a net, but so is this. And so if she runs this out, like this is dead. So um, if you go this way, I thought I thought it might go something like this. Um, and you know, my, in my head, I was like, well, this is black got a lot of points here, which is true. But I really don't have to worry much anymore, and I could play. I don't know what I could play next. Maybe even this, and just see what Black's Black really wants to do about these three stones, because uh, they'll be under. They'll come under some pressure. Uh, at this point in the game, like White really doesn't have any problems. Like White can just sort of play for points. Um, but Black did gain a lot here and is gaining here, so it's a much much closer game. I didn't want to play a closer game, so I just played here. Uh, she played here, which is pretty reasonable. Again, playing high because all the attention now is on this group. Like every move in this game from this point forward is basically about what what happens to the center group um, for both sides. Right? There's very few moves that don't have the center group in the back of the mind. Um, yeah, you know, this game. So I play this one. Uh, and I, I, you know, I, I think my move is fine, and Song liked it, so. Um, but she plays this, which I thought was really interesting. Um, playing, backing off instead of playing the normal Hane. The normal Hane feels terrible, right? If you do this and make this exchange, um, you don't have any points here unless you play another move, right? And if you play this move, well, now there's this defect, so that, again, helps the group. If you play this move, well, this stone helps attack this group, but now it's White's Sente. So you didn't really attack white if you just played a move and then gave Sente to your opponent. And so I actually really liked her move during the game. I was like, oh yeah, look at that. She could just play there and save this Aji for later. My move, I'm like, well, I already have three big corners, or big enough corners. Let's take a fourth. <laughs> and we'll gamble on this middle group. Because again, I, I'm still looking at all these resources I have and thinking, I'm not feeling like I'm in big trouble yet. Uh, and again, I play... You know, I play. I don't play this one uh, because in this case, I think I think she'd be pretty tempted to just play something like this. I'm not sure if this which way it would cut. It's not quite. This move doesn't quite work. You're just trying to get a free move here. Um, like if Black has to play this, Black. This is this is too optimistic for um for Black here. But this would be ideal for Black to be able to get this move and this move for free and this move, and then you can come back here and maybe do something. Um, but it's still really difficult because of you know, the resources I have available. So anyway, I thought this was good. This was, oh, nope. this was my counter to it, to take the corner while still keeping an eye to the outside, right, with a fourth line move. Uh, and then she runs this out. And this move, I think this move is bad. I don't, like, this is, this is just balls out. We're just gonna try to kill you from the inside or from right next to your group. Uh, and I just jump, and this move is fine. Like, this isn't really a problem for black to, for white to deal with. Uh, but then she plays here, and the idea is, okay, maybe we can make a group inside the corner, and maybe we can force this thing to live, or have to run as well, in which case Black will get another move or two over here to cut or threaten to push and cut um, these groups. In the game, I think the robot says, yeah, just take the points, you're fine. <laughs> like, you can still make this live. Uh, that's not what I did in the game. Again, I, 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 was where, I was hip to her plan, and so I was like, okay, let's just cover. Let's just, let's just make sure that her stone's on the inside, she has to make it live, and that way I have more outside resources and I don't feel any pressure, I don't feel any danger. Uh, but she plays here. Again, this was the plan, right? Make you know, make this corner feel uncomfortable and then split. The corner doesn't really feel that uncomfortable yet because she hasn't taken the corner yet. She still needs to play another move and make sure this stone is strong. Um, so this feels premature. White's going to push. She blocks. And the reason why I make this push, <clears throat> the main reason, is that if I do something else, uh, she can't push and cut here, right? This just dies. So this push just shorts the liberties on these two stones enough that it creates a shape problem for her. But little did I know, actually, how good this move really is, um, as you'll see coming up, because I totally, totally miss just a game over sequence. Um, I play here, and she should immediately just push and cut this way. Like, this is, this is 
the only move. Um, I'm just looking for some free stuff. I'm thinking, hey, if I get this and I get this, and if she has to play here, well, then I can play here and you know find a way to link up or play here. Like I, I have ways to make an eye over here or link up to this group or make another eye over here. I'm just, I'm just looking for stuff. And so in that case, this move is actually a little bit of an overplay, I think. I think this is um, not the right move. Um, actually, maybe it's not that bad. Maybe, well, here, you'll see. You'll see what happens coming up. Because she doesn't push. She comes back and threatens to push by making this move. But the problem is that this move actually isn't good enough because of this stone. And it's, and it's, and it's this stone that is pretty magical. Uh, what white should do... I played this move. This is garbage. Don't play this. <laughs> I should play here. And if she tries to push and cut right now, I have this move. And if black... Here, let's play a few variations. Let's say black connects this way. Well, now black needs to either connect or come out. But again, I can play this way. Again, has to connect. And you can actually kind of see what's already happening. Um, that for black to get this group out... Um, well, there's no possibility. Is this, is this trapped? And this is a shape move. Like, I even briefly thought about it, and I was like, no, of course, this doesn't work, but that's why she played here. But the liberties are so short because of these three stones and these two stones that um, no matter what black does here, uh, nothing helps. It's just, it's just doesn't, it doesn't work, matter. <laughs> um, so if she plays here, all I have to do is play here. And... Uh, this is Sente, she has to take another move here, and I can just sort of just push through this way, and there's not really any choice here, right? <laughs> These four stones are going to get cut off, and there's not a lot Black can do about it. If we, if, if you know, we push through this way, then I just connect. Um, isn't that a cool sequence? So it's just finding this move, and knowing that if, if this is the shape, this move is Sente. Oh, I didn't actually show you the sent why this is Sente, if you didn't see it. Um, she plays this move, this play here. And this group is down to two Black Liberties. Still two Black Liberties, there's no escape. It's amazing. So because I missed this one little shape point, this game gets more exciting for a while. Uh, and I play here, thinking, oh yeah, this is this is nice enough shape. I can connect that way, I can connect this way. I'm starting to feel pretty safe. Although, man, this, this, this connecting here um, is safe, is already safe. Right, because she can't push through and cut here because this is Sente. Ah, regrets. Okay. Read your shapes, people. Read your shapes. And it was all because she psyched me out. It was like, oh, my opponent played a really slow move. Like, this was surprising to me, right, that she would not push through here. Um, uh, I think she the, the correct move for her to play if she's going to play has to be this one. And now, and now like, these cuts kind of work, and I'm more fearful. Uh, so this, this move just doesn't work because of this stone. Uh, which is which is amazing. Go is amazing. Yeah, so I play here. Uh, Black is like, oh, okay, well, maybe I'm feeling some pressure. Maybe I'll try to live and maybe poke at these cuts. Again, not a good enough move. Gives white time to connect here. And there's still a cut, right? There's still this push-cut kind of thing here and here. But for whatever reason, I still don't see this move, right? It still doesn't dawn on me. Um, because she tries it right now. And sure enough, here's the sequence, right? This is, this is game over, right? There should be nothing left to do here because all white has to do is play here and the game is over. Uh, black has to play another move here. And I could even ask first. I could play this one first if I wanted to. Um, and just ask. Say, hey, what do you want to do? You want to play this way? Good for you. You get to play this way. And when she pushes through... I actually probably shouldn't play the last move. I should just play this one. Uh, she has to play another move. Which I'm not sure what's best move. Maybe... Uh, I don't know. Either way, this way is still Sente. <laughs> I just play through here, and this stone is just dead. Like, nothing nothing to do. But this game is exciting because I don't play it. Um, and here, I just Atari from the outside. And this this looks very similar, except without this exchange. Um, this I don't I can't actually take these three stones. Um, but I, what I read out is I read out this move. And I was so happy. I was like, oh man, this empty triangle is so cool because it connects this to this and black can either disconnect this way or disconnect this way. So I was like, at the time, 
I was just happy. I was like, oh, I found a thing that just guarantees work to work. Like there's no question. Is this, is this guaranteed to work? And so I didn't look for the better, the better sequence of actually shorting this at liberties and finding this clamp. So yeah, I guess, you know, it's the thing in Go, right? Where you just take the first thing you see that works and it's not the best thing. And then you feel sad about it later. Um, so yeah, this is a cool empty triangle because again, this way, boom, connected. And if she pushes and cuts, boom, connected. It's like, yeah. Uh, so she reads that out too. And it's like, okay, well, let's see if we can muck around in the corner. And uh, I think the robot, the robot's favorite move was here, which is pretty interesting um, because white really doesn't care if these live. What right really cares about is whether or not black white can keep the light we'll say eye space in the corner if white can keep if white can keep eye space and eye shape in the corner we don't really care what happens to these three black stones the move i play is this because I, I my logic is the same except this is much worse <laughs> it turns out uh if <clears throat> we do this sort of cutting thing white's corner is alive i'm oh, sorry black's corner is alive um but now there is this there is this Aji question here I don't know. Uh, no, I still feel like I should kill these two. Still really hard to make these two live. So again, in the game, I thought I was fine because of that. Um, but the robot really didn't like my move. The robot was like, oh, black, this this actually is bigger and um, black has more stuff to do in here. Again, I'm just not really sure what that stuff is. Um, but she did not rise to the occasion. She just played here and white is super happy. Once white plays this move, white is just like, okay, we got this game. I'm connected no matter what. I can connect this way. I can connect this way. Uh, I can just go back to playing endgame. I've got my, you know, 10 points here, another almost 10 points here, 35 at the bottom. Got Comey. We're, we're hanging around 60 points. Black can't make 60 points. Uh, she plays here. And white has a very good move that I play, which is just to attach here. And again, this um, keeps pressure on this group. Um while also making sure I, I can still connect this way or this way. And she plays here. Just again, she's just trying to live now small on the inside. And this is this is the big question mark of the game. I think this is where I spent most of the rest of my time. Because uh, right now I'm at the five minute mark. Here's 610. I spent 30 seconds here. And this is kind of the point of the game where I sp uh, spend the last of my main time. Um, because I don't need to connect here. Right? I really don't. I can just... Um, you know, I can still connect this way or I can connect this way. And so both are fine. And I even started reading out, well, if black pushes through, uh, let's give black a move. Um, I can still capture these two stones. So officially I have three ways to connect. Um, and actually at the time I forgot to read out this, this sequence because what happens if um, black makes this exchange and then takes here? Um, I do read this out later and it turns out this still works for white. Um, because black can't connect this way, All right? So these four black stones are still uh, dead. <laughs> um, but I can't. I just can't decide. I'm like, well, I really want to go do something over here. Um, but this is a big move. Um, but I wasn't convinced it was sente. Like this is worth a lot of points because it keeps black guaranteed to have to live small, and it gives white a few more points over here and guarantees the connection. So there's nothing black can do to threaten me anymore. Like really big move. But I really wanted to play this move. Like, really, really wanted to play this move. And so I do neither. Like, that's 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 what you do in a game of Go. So I do neither. Because I'm like, you know, I'm really... I have some questions about the life and death of this group. And so I play here. I make this placement. And this is this is wrong. This is, this is super wrong. I put this into Elf, and I think... I forgot what the exact percentage it was for White to win this game, but Elf still thinks White's going to win, like, 88% to 12% or something. After this move, it swings like to 89% to 11% the other direction. Like this is this is perhaps like the most egregious blunder I've actually seen Elf um, calculate in in you know one of my own games. Granted, I haven't actually put that many of my own games into it. Uh, maybe just you know five or six, but still, it was like Elf was just super pissed at me because uh, like you fool, you just lost the game. Uh, <laughs> Uh, because after here, um, actually, I guess Black takes this first, asks about this. Um, is that what? Yeah, that's that's the game. 
Um, yeah, uh, let's say I play here, right? So this gets really tricky because um, black has this cut here and white can't push cut. So white has to connect here, but this is Atari, and then this connects, and all of a sudden I have this white group in trouble again. Even though I captured three of these black stones, there's trouble. Um, so there's there's that sort of like super danger. Um, but Audrey pushes through, I block, and again I'm still thinking, well I have this move to connect as well. I can connect this way or I can connect this way, so I'm not really in trouble. Um, but then comes back and connects. It's now white. Um, you know, white is kind of disconnected. Um, but again, in my own mind, not really, <laughs> because again, I can net here or I can connect here, right? And I'm I'm just I'm just going. I'm in no trouble. I am in no trouble. There's no trouble here. So let's keep the pressure on black, and just play here and just connect here. And. Uh, Sure enough, Audrey makes this exchange. And again, I'd at this point, I'd read this out, right? I was like, okay, I can still play this net to capture these, these stones. Uh, but then pushes through and cuts. And I play the net. I'm like, okay, everything's cool. But now it's this point um, where black should actually just take this Atari uh, black could play here, but really just shouldn't worry about these stones at all. And now come back and do this. And it might not seem like like white white is still fine, right? White didn't die, right? Even there's lots of scary things happen, but white didn't die. But black got to live in Sente over here, right? This group is now fine um, because uh, black got to play here first, and white had to come back and essentially capture. Uh, <clears throat> if we finish off this variation. Um, yes, there's Aji here, but black can come back and play here. And even if, let's say, white can play here, this isn't big enough uh, to win the game, it turns out. this All these points here that we just gained for black are, uh, are actually enough. Um, plus, black got uh, you know, more, probably more points here than, than it looks. Um, it's actually still quite a few points. It's not that many points, but it's but you know we black gained here. Black did get to capture two stones from earlier because I because I didn't I didn't play it correctly. So black gained a little bit here. Black gained a little bit here. And then if black gets to have Sente over here to be the first person to come back, oh holy smokes, this game turns black on a dime. And so I think that's what the so that's the variation that Elf was sort of calculating. But uh, Audrey, when she played this, I don't think she realized that this still worked for white. Like, black can't actually save these. And so she plays this move out, right, this peep, and then plays this. Again, she's all out, still, still this mentality of all out, just going to kill everything. Um, but of course that doesn't work, because um, white just pushes through here and, you know, that's, that's she just blunders, you know. Um, Overplace, you know, blunt. It's it's a blunder, right? This this is a like you have to fix this. If you block, you know, it's still just connected um, because of this placement. So just a blunder, just a super greedy blunder in the end. Um, can't play this. You have to you have to use the Aji this way. Give this up and take Sente. And so it was. Whew, what a huge sigh of relief, right? When uh, you know she blunders here and. Um, <laughs> I took this game where I'm basically winning the whole game just by a few points, few points, and it gets whittled down to almost nothing, to almost a 50-50 game. And I cause this massive swing. You know, it looks like I'm doing really well when I get to push through here, but then, you know, turns on a dime when I don't know which of the two moves that are both good I should do, and I do a third move that is terrible compared to either one of them. This swung the game right in her favor, but she can't that she can't capitalize, right? She can't She can't drive the stake through the heart. So I was really happy to play this game. It was a really nice, just feeling like, yeah, I can play in this league, uh, particularly because this was at, a really long, at the end of a really long work day, and uh, I still had to actually have to do more work in the evening after this game. And I had limited, I had three, like three and a half, four hours of sleep the night before, so I was actually drinking coffee for this game, and I'm not a good coffee drinker, like I'm in the coffee sweat, nervous uh, stage. So this is really just such a big sigh of relief just to win, you know, come through with a win here, undeserved or not, you know, because of this, because of my own blunder. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, uh, yeah, I'm still just tired talking about it. Uh, but 
Anyway, I'm now looking very much forward to the rest of uh, Yungazang. And uh, again, like I said, at some point, I'll try to get permission to from Insong to do a, a more review style video of it um, after I've been in it for a little bit longer and can really give you the down low of like, you know, is this is this worth it? Because it is expensive. It is it does cost you a couple hundred dollars for a few months of of uh, lessons, reviews and games, league games. So anyway, I think that's 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 enough for a video. Uh, again, if somehow if you've ended up watching the end of this video without the beginning, just review one more time the Joseki that we shall not play anymore. Do not play this Joseki. It is this black move right here. Do not play this. I wish there was an X shape. There you go. I can put, this, I can put the little X in, in that box. This is this is no longer a move, people. This is super special case Joseki. All the robots agree this is good for white. Uh, all right. Thanks for watching. Um, thanks for sticking with it. Hope you uh, enjoyed the game. We'll see you next time. <laughs>